This is question one. Here we're told that n is an integer. Then we're told to write down all the possible values of n. And we're told that n is greater than negative 2, but less than or equal to 3. So first of all, this word integer, that just means whole number. So we need to say all of the whole numbers which are bigger than minus 2, but less than or equal to 3. So quite simply, that's going to be minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Notice that I've included 3 here because that line underneath the inequality sign, that just means that it can be equal to 3 as well. OK, part B. We're told that x is a number. Then we're told another number is 9 greater than x. We're also told that both numbers are whole numbers. And then the total of the two numbers is less than 60. And we're asked to find the greatest possible value of x. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to form an inequality. And we're going to do this with the information that we're given. So we're told that x is a number and that another number is 9 greater than x. And the total of the two numbers is less than 60. So we can think of our first number as x. x is a number. And then if a number is 9 greater than x, we could say that that will be x plus 9. Then we're told the, to the total of the two numbers is less than 60. So if I total x and x plus 9, that gives me 2x plus 9. And this is less than 60. So I've set up an inequality. And all that's left for me to do is to solve this. So subtracting 9 from both sides will leave me with 2x is less than 51. Which means that, and then dividing both sides by 2, x is less than 25.5. However, we're not quite finished there because we're told that both numbers are whole numbers. So find the greatest possible value of x. So x has to be a whole number. So the greatest possible value of x would be 25. So x is less than 25.5, so the greatest whole number that it could be would be 25.